Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Now, Bob, I might disappoint you a little bit in finding out how to make money because I just don't think it will be suitable for you. You feel good doing it. Oh, no. the, the little title of the speech is How to Lie with Statistics. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think any, actually I don't think anybody here is the type of liar that would do that. There are certainly a lot of marketing people out there that would. This relates to our last election. You know, I, I went through the election, I came to a meeting here and I didn't check the TV all day. I was so sure that Hillary would win. Everybody said they would. You know, the, the lost, the, Odds makers in, in Las Vegas were paying something like 88 to percent. You know, if you put in a dollar, you, you would uh, you get a what a dollar twelve back. About eight dollars. Okay, what happened? And then I went down to the restaurant with all of, with the rest of you guys, and hey, you know, Hillary isn't winning at all. In fact, now part of it is that Trump, you know, he really went out and worked the last few days and all the time that he could, and Hillary didn't. But somehow, her advisors thought that they were going to win. They assumed that they were going to win. They sent out people to, to ask to talk to people on the street and into colleges and this. And, and sometimes something happens where people on the street, they'll pick a, a more cleanly dressed, a person that looks more intelligent. They don't pick a... The, 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 their, uh, their view is somewhat biased to look for. Now, so that got me thinking about this, uh, this particular speech. I've heard so many times over the past few years that that sort of thing that happened years ago when, uh, F, when Alf Landon was fighting, was against Roosevelt and Truman was against whoever he was running against and the, the papers were already printed the previous night, you know, who's winning? You know, they figured Truman had lost. The morning it was, they were sure that Truman had won. Another time when Kennedy was uh, running against Nixon, there was a time that Nixon actually was ahead. And then Kennedy pulled ahead again. So, here's a graph. Of, and on the, on the left side, on the right side here is a number of figures running from 2 on up to 24. And that means uh, factory had production of 20,000, whatever they're producing, and it went up to about 22 over a period of one year. That's, that's fine, that's pretty good, 10% increase in a year, but it doesn't look very good on paper. So make it look good on paper, you, you draw another graph with another line. It's from 18 to 24, but it looks a lot steeper. It looks a lot more exciting. Wow, you know, we can get better investors in doing this. Or if you want to show what they call a, they call a one-dimensional figure. Now, how much bigger, who, th who thinks a bigger sack of money here would be like three or four times bigger? It certainly looks it. As it's geared, it's supposed to look it. In actuality, it represents twice as much. And it, it, people are able to get by with that because it's sort of legal, it's sort of nearly accurate. And the other thing, another thing that comes up is averages. There's an arithmetical average. You add up everybody's income and lives in a certain place, divide it by the number of people that live there and you come up with an arithmetical average, which is almost always higher than most of the people, the more, more common people that live there. We're talking about a situation of maybe 200 people living somewhere in three multi-millionaires. People with income in the, in the two or three billions will almost double the other's uh, reported income. The next thing is the median. It's used all the time. Half the sales are above, half the sales are below. That, but that isn't quite accurate either. That's a little bit higher than the actual, what most people make. Another thing that can be called an average is a mode it occurs most often. If 100 people out of the, that group of 200 make in the mid-20s, that'll, that'll be called an average. 
Now, polls, and the other thing that you're asking, you know, to get who you're going to vote for, what products do you like, and are they, oh, and they come out with some really ridiculous polls and, and get scientific answers on it. Now, like, how often do you bathe? How often do you brush your teeth? Who's going to answer that correctly over the telephone or to a stranger knocking on your door? You aren't. That's not going to happen. Yet, or we all know that uh, we know that if you if you toss pennies, heads or tails, a thousand times, they're going to come out of probably real close to 500 on either way. But maybe not. But they, they will. But if you toss them out ten times, you got a really good chance of maybe eight out of ten coming up heads. And that's a, the danger of a small sample. Some of these toothpaste ads that come out, you know, the toothpaste works really well and it, it uh, had significant damage to dental caries. So, but when you, if you look back, they aren't going to tell you that they came up with a, a sample of six or 12 people, or in some cases only two to check from. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <coughs> they kept coming up with trying it again and again and again until they come up with a sample group that said what they want. But a very important, a very, put something on that sounds like a medical laboratory and and uh, maybe take a picture of it with a, something that looks like a doctor, you know, with holding this report and it came out. So watch these things. You know, they, you think they go away after a while. They don't when you really look into them. They do. So, you know, what, what you read, gluten-free, stuff like that, but what do they, what do they put in it? What's it really mean? So the main thing is watch, say who did it, why, and what are they trying to say? Mr. Toastmaster?